Hello everyone, welcome back and let's shoot for the second question of the weekly contest 273. The question is execution of all suffix instructions staying in a grid. In this question, we are given a grid of size n cross n. That means it's a square grid. Also, we are given that there is a robot which is free to move along four directions up, right, left and bottom. We are also given the starting position for this robot. It's x coordinate and it's y coordinate. Along with this, we are given an array of set of instructions along with which the robot needs to move. If in the instruction, it is specified that the, the character value is L, that means the robot moves to the left. If the character value is R, robot moves right. If it is U, robot moves up. If it is D, robot moves down. What we need to do? We need to return the answer array, which is the number of instructions that the robot can move if it begins executing from the ith instruction in the input input string s that means the robot for the first case the robot will start from this instruction the zeroth index for the second case the robot will start from the, the first index for the third case the robot will start from the second index for the fourth case the robot will start from the fourth index of the set of instructions that are specified to us we need to identify up till how many instructions can the robot successfully move. So I'll be talking about how this output array is generated more in the presentation. So let's quickly move on to the PPT. Execution of all suffix instructions staying in a grid 2120. It's a medium level question on lead code and I also feel the same. So let's start by taking the same example. The input robot starting position is given to us as 0, 0,1, which is this one. And the input instructions that are given to us as R, R, D, D, L, U. So let's start. Let's assume the first this, the, for this zeroth index where the starting instruction index is 0, the this value is R. So robot moves towards right. So robot gets here at this particular index. And let's pro let's proceed ahead next we see again an r so robot again moved towards the right index and what do we see the robot is out of the grid therefore we can conclude that how many instructions robot was successfully able to execute only one instruction which is this one so the answer corresponding to this index turns out to be one let's proceed ahead and let me just change the color of pen for the second iteration and let's take green the starting instruction is r so uh, robot move towards right so robot goes here the next instruction is d so uh, robot goes down robot reaches this the next instruction is again d robot again moves down it reaches this the next instruction is l so robot move towards left over here and the next instruction is u so robot move towards up and now we have exhausted all the instructions how many instructions the robot was successfully able to execute? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the answer corresponding to the first index becomes 5. Let's proceed ahead and let me just change the color of pen for the next iteration. And the robot is starting with this, the second index as the starting instruction. We have D here. So robot is placed over here. It moves down. So robot goes here. Again, a down. It goes here. And then we have left. It moved towards left, then it moved towards up. So robot goes up. How many instructions the robot was successfully able to execute? One, two, three, four. So the answer becomes four corresponding to the second index. Let's move on for the next iteration. And let me just change the color of pen. The starting index turns out to be three and the first instruction is D. So robot starts from the starting position. It goes down, it goes here. Next we have left. So it goes towards left. Next we have U, it goes towards up. So robot has ex successfully executed three instructions and the answer corresponding to the third index becomes three. Let's proceed ahead. And next we have uh, the starting index as four and the first instruction is L. So robot goes down and uh, the robot goes left here. And then we have uh, U. Robot tries to go up. It is out of the grid. How many instructions was it successfully able to execute? Only one instruction, which is L. So the answer corresponding to this becomes one. Let's proceed ahead. Next, we have the last instruction starting position, which is U. So Robot starts from here, five, and Robot goes towards up. So 
robert moves out of the grid if he starts from u as a starting instruction the answer corresponding to this becomes 0 so the output array is 154312 which is in sync with our expectation and we'll exactly do the same steps as i have talked here so let's quickly move on to the coding part where we'll conclude how we have coded this up I have defined an answer array that will actually store the answer and the size of this array will be equal to the number of instructions that we have. So let's write the for loop because we are considering the ith index as a starting index for, for the robot to execute the instruction. I have created a variable count moves and I have created two variables x index and y index which are the starting positions of the robot. So let's create another loop where j is equal to the the value of i j is less than or equal to s dot length j plus plus if my current character happens to be equal to u i reduce the x index because the robot is moving up if the current character happens to be equal to d i increase the x index because the robot is moving down if the current character happens to be equal to l i decrease the y index if my current character happens to be right i increase the y index in case my x index and y or y index is out of the grid x is less than 0, y is less than 0, or x is greater than or equal to n, y is greater than or equal to n in all these 4 cases I abort the process and break out of the loop otherwise I go and increment my count moves variable and once I am done with the iteration up till the last index and I, I, either I have witnessed the break condition or I have executed all the instructions whatever value is stored at current moves variable I add it to my index at the ith index. Once I'm done with the, both the loops, I return the answer array. The time complexity of this approach is order of s dot length square, where uh, s dot length represents the number of instructions that we have. The space complexity is again equal to s dot length. And let's try to run this. Accepted. This brings me to the end of today's question. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from Coding Decoded. I'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question.